everybody welcome to my mock draft pre combine if you're new to this channel like and subscribe for more draft content I'm gonna try and keep some combine um, videos coming out too subscribe um, this is gonna be a mock draft that I think teams should do I don't think necessarily that they will do um, and we're gonna go and make a few trades I won't be super trade heavy but I think if the opportunity presents itself, I think that's something that I'm going to do. So obviously, the Chicago Bears, they're going to trade out of this spot. Now, they, they're they saying they're doing their due diligence on quarterbacks. But let's be honest, Justin Fields has shown that he can make strides. You just need to get him help. Now, I say you need to get him help. But if the opportunity presents itself, I'm going to go a different direction. Now... I personally think that the Colts will trade up. So, and logistically, I'm not going to make this super accurate. So, for just this purpose, I'm just going to trade these picks. We're going to swap. And now the Colts are on the clock. I think the Colts could go a couple different ways. Um, I think Bryce Young is one that will probably end up being the consensus number one. Um, personally, he's not my favorite quarterback in this draft class, but I think it's definitely a possibility that he goes number one. Um, also think CJ Stroud could be a number one pick. If it were up to me and I were the Colts, I would want CJ Stroud. But again, I'm not a scout. I'm not a GM. Um, I'm the furthest thing from it. And take it or leave it. I think they should go C.J. Stroud, but what I think is going to happen is Colts are going to go Bryce Young. I do think he's a good playmaker. I think they're a quarterback away from being a good team, um, although the Jags in their division look to be really, really good. So with that being said, we'll go number one, Bryce Young to the Colts. And then at number two, I think if you're the Texans, I think you stay pat. Um, I don't think you move here. Um, I don't think you take a quarterback at this spot. Um, personally, I don't know if there's any teams that really trade up for a quarterback other than um like looking here you know the raiders um i think the panthers titans maybe jets no commanders they're gonna run with how i think tampa is gonna end up going with a veteran so um i think if you're the texans you take one of the most premier positions that is left um, other than quarterback and I think the second most important and you can debate this I think it's edge rush um, edge being pass rush essentially you know you could go Jalen Carter who I think is a phenomenal player but for me personally with positional value I think you've got to take Will Anderson Jr. here so you know with a defensive minded head coach like D'Amico Ryan's um, you know, he's had Nick Bosa. They've built through the trenches when he was at the 49ers. I mean, look at that defensive line. Javon Kinlaw, Eric Armstead, had DeForest Buckner, and they have Nick Bosa. I think you've got to take Will Anderson Jr. out of Alabama. Um, that just seems like an easy pick for me, so that's where I'm going to place him. And with number three, I know it says positional needs. It's like guard, center, edge, cornerback. Um, sitting here at number three, I think it would be smart if they took Jalen Carter, but I don't think that's the way they go. I'm going to be doing what I think they're going to do, and I think Tyree Wilson is somebody that is really shot up on the draft boards. Um, great edge rusher out of Texas Tech. Again, edge is a huge key to success. Now, they did have Hassan Reddick. They didn't really get much, like, pro go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You got it. Um, production. Oh, my goodness. Production's a tough word. Uh, production out of Hassan Reddick, and then he goes to the Eagles, and he has, what, 10, 11 sacks, over 10-plus sacks or something like that? So maybe not a good spot for Tyree Wilson, but good for the Cardinals. So Tyree Wilson to the Cardinals. And then here at number four, I think if you're the Bears, I think you got to take one of the best players in the draft and go Jalen Carter. Um, the Bears were, like, one of the worst teams in – terms of sack production and I think Jalen Carter it's hard to find pass rushing defensive tackles and defensive tackles that can kind of do it all 
and I think Jalen Carter is that guy. Um, I really like him, and a lot of people think he might be one of the best players in the draft. Um, personally, I really like Jordan Davis, so you know, getting his teammate here for the Chicago Bears, getting that inside presence, um, build the trenches. Go ahead, Jalen Carter at number four. And with Seattle here, I think there's a couple ways they could go, honestly. Um, came out today that I think it might have been Pete Carroll or their GM said that they're doing their work on um, the quarterbacks and they've been in talks with them. And they could go with the bridge route. But for some reason with Geno, like, they played good this year. Um, I think you bring Geno back for a couple years, maybe two, three, get a quarterback somewhere in there. I don't think you spend the capital here. I think you've got to go get somebody to sure up this defensive line. Now, you know, it says guard, center, defensive line is their biggest needs. Um, to me, especially, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to go Miles Murphy from Clemson. I think he's going to shoot up draft boards. Um, he's probably one of the most premier edge rushers here. You could also go Lucas Van Ness, who's really shot up draft boards. He, to me, Lucas Van Ness, feels more of like a a lion. So I'm going to go Miles Murphy, but I could see it flipped. Now, with the Lions, um, I think they built through the trenches. I don't think they go corner with the Jeff Okuda tri or, uh, pick not really working out. Um... I think they built through the trenches, and I think Lucas Van Ness with Aiden Hutchinson just feels like a combo that you would want. Um, so with that being said, going to go Lucas Van Ness with the number six pick, pair up Aiden Hutchinson and him, and two great edge rushers on the same team. And then here at number seven, the Las Vegas Raiders have their pick of the litter of who they want at quarterback. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of Will Levis, but he, to me, seems like he would be a Raider. I could also see C.J. Stroud there. Now, when you think of when you think of this team, you think of Josh McDaniels. What does he like from his QBs? Well, he's worked with Tom Brady, he's worked with Jacoby Brissett, and he's worked with Jimmy Garoppolo, and then he's worked with Derek Carr. I think Will Levis is the most game-ready is what everybody's saying. I'm going to mock him here, although I think C.J. Stroud being a Raider is not far off. Here at number eight, um, if you're the Falcons, I think you're rocking with Desmond Ritter, so I don't think this is a QB pick. Um, I think receiver-wise, I don't think that's another pick. Um, <clears throat> with your edge rushers pretty much being off the board, at least the top-end ones, um, I think you got to go corner here. Um, maybe you could go linebacker, but I think giving AJ Terrell a number two corner, um, and preferably one of the better corners in this draft class in Devon Witherspoon, I think you take him here. I think he's a really good corner out of Illinois. Pair him up with AJ Terrell. Um, you could go many directions with this team, but I think this is the safest bet. And then here at number nine, um, C.J. Stroud falls in your lap to the Carolina Panthers. I really think this Will Levis or C.J. Stroud could both be flipped. I think I could see Stroud on the Raiders and Will Levis to the Panthers. But for the sake of it and Josh McDaniels, I'm going to go with Will Levis. And then here at number nine, I think you take, me personally, the best quarterback in the draft. and You go get C.J. Stroud. I think he'll be a good Panther. Um, City will love him. And dude's a stud. And then here at number 10, if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, really you're going to lose some guys in free agency, but I think the biggest one is losing out in the cornerback position. And why don't we just go replace him with Christian Gonzalez, who for a while was the number one corner in this draft class. Go get him. Like what? Like it says needs, wide receiver, guard, center. Well, Jason Kelsey might come back for another year. I imagine he does. Cam Jurgens has moved over to guard. And wide receiver, you've got some really good wide receivers. So I, I don't see it personally. I mean, maybe you go get one of these tackles, but I think it's too early. So I'm going to go with Christian Gonzalez 
to the Eagles to replace James Bradbury. And maybe he learned something from Darius Slay, who's one of the top corners in the league, who's kind of aging at this point. Here at number 11, I think this one's easy. You know, they do need wide receiver help. They just released Taylor Lewan. The top edge rushers are gone. I think you go with a tackle. And to me, I feel like Peter Skaronsky would be a guy that the Titans would want. Although, personally, I like the high upside of Paris Johnson Jr. But for the sake of what I think the Titans will do, I'm going to go Peter Skaronsky at number 15. And so, if you're the Houston Texans, you're kind of in an interesting spot. You need a lot on this team. Now, you could go get a primary pass catcher in Quentin Johnston. And we'll know more about him um, after the combine. Brian Branch would be awesome. But here's what I think. Now, you could be bad. You could potentially just build, like take the best pay player available. Go take like Paris Johnson Jr., replace Laramie Tunzel, trade him for picks, whatever. I think that would be the smart move. But what I think they do with Anthony Richardson being here at number 12, I think you got to take him. He's got a super high ceiling. He doesn't need to start immediately. I don't think they should. I think they should let Davis Mills go, see how he does. And then at the trade deadline, if you feel like Anthony Richardson has made those strides, kick Davis Mills to the curb and trade him for some picks to a team that needs a backup, whether that be injury, keep him as a backup, or if Davis Mills is playing good, go ahead. Now, if I were the Texans, I would personally not go quarterback here. Um, I would probably go with Paris Johnson Jr. and then trade Laramie Tunzel for picks. Um, gives you more cap. Also, if you're bad and you, you're committed to me to D'Amico Ryans, let's just build this team. Let's be bad. And then next year, let's go get Caleb Williams or Drake May, who are going to be some stud quarterbacks if they continue to develop. But... I'm not a GM. I'm not Nick Casario. So Anthony Richardson at 12 um, just feels like the pick. And then here at 13, um, with Makai Becton being hurt, really hasn't been able to be on the field. Um, tackle seems like a position that they've just really need to hit on at this point. And honestly, I'm going to go Paris Johnson Jr. here. Um, I think he's got the highest ceiling. Um, I mean, he's a freak of nature. And that's kind of what Makai Becton was. But I think Paris Johnson Jr. will actually pan out. And I'm a big Makai Becton fan, by the way. And then here at 14, I am a Patriots fan, so let's preface this. I'm not going to be biased. So the needs, QB, tackle, edge. We're going to roll with Mac Jones. I, I know that's probably what's going to happen. Tackle, I think, is in play. Um, although I think if you're the Patriots, I think the Patriots would have been more inclined to get Peter Skaronsky than they would Broderick Jones just because Peter Skaronsky is game ready. I think with Jacoby Myers hitting free agency, he may resign. Boring! Really? You've got your pick of the litter. Um, you've got Devontae Parker, who's more of a size type receiver. Um... We brought Slade Bolden in for a workout today, so that's going to be huge. Slade Bolden is a uh, really fast player. No, Slade Bolden is like a catch-over-the-middle Julian Edelman type. So if that even came to fruition, um, you would definitely want Jordan Addison here. But the way I think and how the Patriots build their teams, they're losing some DBs. They got Kyle Duggar a long time ago. I'm going to go Brian Branch. Um, he's going to play a lot of nickel. That's what the Patriots do. He just seems like a Patriot player, especially with a connection with Nick Saban and Belichick. Here at pick 15, you would think the Packers would want to go get a receiver. Um, maybe they do. <laughs> Um, personally, I don't think they do, but it'd be funny because I say they don't and then they do. So with that being said, I'm going to go with the pick that I think 
they should do and they might consider, especially if Bakhtiari being hurt all the time. Um, I just don't see the reason. Like, if Aaron Rodgers isn't coming back and you've got Jordan Love, you don't need to go get a rookie receiver. You need vets. Um, so I'm going to go Broderick Jones here. Sure up that offensive line where Elgton Jenkins doesn't have to play every position on the line. And then here at 16, um, Eric Bieniemy. I'm trying to think of that. Ron Rivera. Um, you got Sam Howe as quarterback. You just released Carson Wentz. So you're committed. Um, obviously, offensive line is a concern here. But, I mean, really I can't. I don't want to make any trades from here because I just don't know. And I don't want to project at this point. Um, you franchise tag Deron Payne. You've got Sam Howe. You've got Terry McLaurin, who's, to me, an all-around receiver. Uh, Jahan Dotson, more of a deep threat. I would personally think Jackson Smith, the Jigba, or Jordan Addison would be a great pick here. But why not go get a big target for Sam Howe and Quentin Johnson? This is one of the toughest picks I think I've had to make yet. But I'm going to go with Quentin Johnson here. Just feels like a good fit. Here at 17, you need tackle, linebacker, and corner. So the top tackle is essentially off. Um, there's some different ways you could go here. When thinking about the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think they need a corner, and I think Joey Porter Jr. would be huge here. Um, he's actually probably my favorite corner in the class. Um, I haven't watched enough Devon Weatherspoon to say whether or not I like him more. But I'm going to go Joey Porter Jr. here. He would look sweet in the black and gold. All right. And we are here at pick 18 for the Detroit Lions. Um, who did we give them? We gave them Lucas Van Ness. I don't think you go super young on the defensive line. I think that's kind of a problem. Um, you've got really good receivers on the board. Now, when thinking about who you've got, so you've got DJ Chark. Um, I think he might be back next year. You've got Amon Ross St. Brown. Amon Ross St. Brown, to me, is like a Jackson Smith and the Jigba type. Um, and then you've got Jameson Williams, who's a deep threat. So it's kind of like, what do you do here? Um, you could take Deontay Banks. Man, this, to me, would be a really good trade down spot. But I don't know if they're committed to DeAndre Swift, so I wouldn't be surprised if they went Bijan. But this is a really tough pick. Man, I think with the production that you've had from some of these players, I feel like you take a chance here on a high ceiling in Brian Breesey. I know it's really young on the defensive line, but Dan Campbell, he's just like, bite the kneecaps. I could see this. But I'm going to go play it safe. I'm going to go corner here. Deontay Banks out of Maryland. They need corner help. They've had some pretty good production from their DBs, but this guy's a sure talent. Here at 19, um, there is a lot that the Buccaneers need. Um, they just released Leonard Fournette. They have Rashad White. So I don't know if they necessarily would go running back here. This also feels like a Bijan Robinson type of uh type of spot but with all these tight ends on the board um i think you're lacking a good tight end i'm gonna go dalton kincaid out of utah um it could have been michael my michael mayer here as well but dalton kincaid utah he's considered one of the better ones and i think that's plain and simple I'm just gonna go with him there um and then we're back with seattle at number 20 they went defense. I think you go get a receiver. And honestly, I think Jordan Addison being here is kind of crazy. Um, I like Zay Flowers to the Seattle Seahawks, but go get Jordan Addison. Tyler Lockett is not getting any younger by any means. Go get him. Fast receiver, deep threat. Um, personally, I think Zay Flowers is a better fit, but Jordan Addison is such a good value here at number 20. And then here at 21, honestly, I think Chargers go receiver. Um, Mike Williams is your deep threat. Uh, you got 
Josh Palmer, who is more of a slot inside type guy. I mean, he could do really whatever. Josh Palmer was pretty good this year as a number three, but you need a designated two. I think Josh Palmer's not necessarily a two at the moment. Um, to me, Jackson Smith Najigba feels like he would be the pick here. But with no speed, Demon, I'm going to go Zay Flowers. It's a weird one because I personally like the Baltimore Ravens to get Jackson Smith Najigba here. Um, he feels like a Baltimore Raven to me. They need that guy that can catch consistently, catch over the middle of the field. So Jackson Smith Najigba at number 22 to the Baltimore Ravens. And then here at 23, you need defensive line. Go get Cansey out of Pittsburgh. Great defensive tackle um, where you're kind of lacking inside stuff at this point. Um, I think that's kind of an easy pick. And I am trying to speed it up here because I have been recording already for 22 minutes. But let's go with number 24. Um, looking at the Jacksonville Jaguars, I, this is another one that's kind of kind of weird because you know you look at their needs and it says offensive line but when you look at the offensive line like what's left that you would want maybe osiris torrance would be a good pick here but i feel like it's almost a little bit of a reach when you've got some of these guys on the board and honestly i think michael mayer here would be really good for the jacksonville jaguars so i'm gonna mock him here um, Evan Ingram, don't know if he returns, but two tight end sets would be even better for Trevor Lawrence. So I'm going to go Michael Mayer. I really like that. think they could do a lot with him and then maybe use Evan Ingram as a slot receiver catching stuff over the middle. Here at 25, thinking about the New York Giants and what they need, to me, they need more than... God, I don't know. They need a lot to me. Um, this is a tough pick. I don't think it would hurt if they went edge rush and got Will McDonald out of Iowa State. I think he's really good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mock him here, but this is one of the tougher picks. Now, this pick right here is probably going to take off a lot of people. But this is a Jerry Jones pick, in my opinion. It says they need receiver. I don't think they go receiver. It says they need defensive line. Don't see Brian Breesey going here. Linebacker, I could see them going Arkansas, Drew Sanders. But I think he falls into the second round, potentially, depending on how he does in the combine. I'm going to go B. John Robinson. Um, yeah, you can trash me in the comments if you want. But Bijan Robinson here is not crazy. You think about Emmett Smith, you think about Zeke. Well, Zeke is kind of phasing out here. Um, he's on his last leg. Literally, he's like, he's just done at this point. Um, Tony Pollard is a really good receiving back. Coming off an injury, probably going to get franchise tagged. Who do you have at running back? You know, go get Bijan. He's the best prospect in the draft, potentially. Um, Everybody's really high on him in the fantasy community. I'm really high on him in general. Um, even his backup is really good, by the way. Go check out Roshan Johnson. B. John Robinson here. Texas, Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Pfft, easy pick. Yeah, that brother's starving. <laughs> uh, Buffalo Bills here. Um, to me, they could go a whole, whole lot of ways. Um, I would like... For them to go off Sirens Torrens here and protect one of the better quarterbacks in the league. But I think Jordan Poyer or Micah Hyde, like I think these guys are about to phase out or not be on the team anymore, especially Jordan Poyer. So I'm going to infuse Antonio Johnson there, um, safety out of Texas A&M. If you're the Bengals, you really are upset that Michael Mayer went at the number 24 spot but with your like you could really go Luke Musgrave here or Anton Harrison um, 
you know, says they need D-line. Do you really want to take a shot on Brian Brisey? Um, maybe. A cornerback, there's just not, like, a super bona fide good cornerback here. Like, there's really good players, but the top guys are gone. Um, gosh, I really want to protect Joe Burrow, but I think they're missing something at tight end. I think Hayden Hurst is done after this year. I think he's on a free agent. Who knows if he comes back? Luke Musgrave is really good out of Oregon State. Joe Burrow gets tight end. Where CJ Uzama, when he was there, that was huge for them. He was really good. And here's where I make an interesting pick. I don't think the Saints go QB yet. I think they will trade up in the second round and go get a QB. Maybe Hendon Hooker. I feel like he'd be a good fit there. But I'm going to go with Brian Breezy. So you're at the end of the first round. I feel like you could take a shot on this guy. Um, your defensive line was okay last year. You didn't have a good inside presence. Um, sure, there's injury concerns here, but he's got a high, high ceiling. Um, top recruit, I think out of my high school class, out of 2019, right? Yeah. So, Brian Breesey to the Saints. And then pick 30, um, Eagles, back on the clock. Uh, you can go. <laughs> A couple different ways with them. Um, I really don't think they need wide receiver. Uh, but Osiris Torrance he being here, um, your offensive line's getting a little older. Um, obviously, Jason Kelsey, if he retires, then you've got Osiris Torrance who can come in and slide in at guard, and Cam Jurgens can move over back to center. And then you're here at pick number 31. Um, I'll tell you straight up, I would want to mock BJ Ojolari here. But I'm not going to. Says they need wide receivers. I think they're fine. Um, I'm going to go Nolan Smith. If he were healthy, I really think he'd be a top 10 player, if not a top 5 player. Um, this is kind of a premium pick at this point. You need edge rush still. I don't think you could ever have enough in the rotation. And so with pick 31, the last pick in the first round, because the Dolphins forfeited theirs. Nolan Smith. So, to sum up this draft, number one, Bryce Young. Uh, got an ad, I'm broke. Series, my brother. Get the full version. Uh, awkward. Uh, number two, Will Anderson. Number three, Tyree Wilson. Number four, Jalen Carter. Number five, Miles Murphy. Lucas Van Ness at six. Um, and I'm not going to name off each one. But um, let me know what you think. Please don't harass me in the comments. I will cry. But. Yeah, I mean, this is not what I would do. This is what I think they would do. Um, I'm not very good at doing trades, but let me know what you guys think. Who do you want your team to draft in the draft? Who's your favorite players? Um, like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.